What's good Fight Hype family? This is your Fight Hype news reporter Alan Dawson. I'm also the news editor at Pro Box TV and I've got a weekly column at the Sporting Tribune. I'm back with a new edition of the Sport of the Source report where I raid my contacts book to provide updates on things I think you guys will want to know. Uh, today we're looking at Conor McGregor, Kermel Moton and Sean O'Malley versus Javante Davis. First up, Conor McGregor and when or if he'll return to the Octagon having been linked for so long with the return fight against Michael Chandler, who was his rival coach on The Ultimate Fighter. One potentially glaring uh, obstacle is USADA recently reiterating to MMA Junkie that McGregor must re-enter the drug testing pool and submit two clean uh, drug tests over a six month period before he can compete. Though there has been speculation that you know possible quote exemptions end quote uh, can be made. I'm ready to fight tomorrow Michael Chandler said per MMA Junkie recently. I've got a loose deadline in my head that I'm not going to share with you but we'll flirt with that whenever we figure it out. He later said, it's a constant talking between my management and the UFC. UFC talking to Connor and his team, I'm sure, so we're figuring this thing out. It's gonna be Chandler versus McGregor and it's going to be fun. According to ESPN this last weekend, Chandler said he'd spoken to the UFC and that a December bout remains possible, with McGregor also mentioning that month uh, on X, the app formerly known as Twitter. He said in a voice note, I'm ready, I wanted an announcement for December 16. I've given everything, it's not going to happen. UFC boss Dana White meanwhile said, why not December? Who the F knows? We'll see how this thing plays out. Now, I heard from a source out here in Las Vegas a few weeks back that the end of the year always looked optimistic for McGregor to return to competition. Uh, and I got a message from a, another source of mine in Dublin actually um, overnight that the word from the Straight Blast gym, which is the, the gym where McGregor's tra trained, it's run by John Kavanagh, his, his head MMA coach, that a January date is now being targeted. So January may be looking possible for McGregor to return. That's obviously different to what ESPN uh, has as their reporter, MMA reporter Mark Raimondi, good guy I know, he speculates that um, McGregor and Chandler could be allotted for UFC 300, which would be a big anniversary show and a, you know that would be a good headliner for, for that event. Chandler, ESPN reported, would be willing to wait for McGregor to compete uh, for, to atop that card. Regardless, that pushes McGregor's return into 2024, which is a bit of a shame because it looked, looked like you know maybe he would be coming back this year. And he, you know he wants to fight. Chandler wants to fight, uh, and that show would be big business for MMA, the UFC, for fight media, for fans. Uh, but there just remains clearly a few hurdles to clear before such an event can come to fruition. Now, on this show, we update you on the biggest names in the sport, like Conor McGregor, but we're also updating you on the next generation. Um, one of the things I love seeing in the fight game is the young blood coming through. And man, when we talk about young blood coming through, few epitomize that more so than Kermel Moton, who's a 17-year-old um, who's aligned with Floyd Mayweather, Leonard Ellaby, Mayweather Promotions, and the uh, Mayweather Boxing Club in Las Vegas here. Floyd himself called Kermel, and I quote, a future world champion. Floyd even generated a lot of attention on this channel on Fight Hype in a recent interview when he said that his 126 pounder, Kermel, who is yet to even fight as a pro, would be a good matchup for Lee Wood, who's the current WBA featherweight world champion. Yeah, there's been rumors that Kermel, who's this 18-time 18 national, national amateur champion, that he'll be making his debut soon. I confirmed those rumors today with a source close to the fighter. That's happening. You know, the 17-year-old's officially crossing over into the yeah, into, into the pro game and for me it's going to be one of the most anticipated debuts for some time maybe not on a par with some of the guys like Vasily Lomachenko and Anthony Joshua because they had the gold medal behind them but I, I can't think of many uh, pro debuts in the last five years that will have as much uh, attention as Kermel considering you know, the, the, the backing that he's got he's training at the Mayweather gym and he's got Floyd and Leonard uh, you know basically in his corner giving him advice and nurturing him through the pro game this is just my take here now but what I really like about Mayweather promotions is what they do with young fighters they've got 20 year old Jaleel Hackett who is 7-0 they've got 18 year old Robert May Merriweather the third who is 4-0 and I saw his uh, US debut here in Las Vegas uh, last December, and he just had a lot of style and swag, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing him again and again. So I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing Kermel make his debut, whether that happens in Vegas or not, whether it happens next month or not, kind of remains to be seen that that isn't really official yet, but his debut is coming soon. Um, so, you know, this could be one thing to take an art to keep an eye on. Why now? Uh, my source said everything in life, just like in boxing, is about timing. 
and after Floyd Mayweather discussed a debut with Kermel uh, and his family, they all agreed the time is right to cross over now. Um, the source confirmed that Floyd has had his eye on Kermel since he was a, since he was a kid, five years old. Uh, Floyd's got a good relationship with his family and has been a major supporter in his amateur career. The third and final update from me regards new UFC champion Sean O'Malley. He's fresh off a thumpingly nasty bantamweight title win over Aljamain Sterling, whom he finished in the second round. Uh, O'Malley then addressed the press and called out the thunderous puncher in boxing, Javante Davis. We've seen this more and more really, this cross-pollination of mixed martial arts and boxing. I cover both sports, I love both things equally. Um, I'm more boxing background, so maybe it's not that equal. I probably am more biased towards boxing, but I love a quality scrap and I love it in an event. Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor combined for one of the best-selling combat sports events in history and it always seemed clear that the former UFC champion Francis Ngannou would secure, would secure a payday in boxing. I was hoping it was going to be against Wilder, but um, you know Tyson Fury is the one that Ngannou is going to face uh, in October in Saudi Arabia. Um, we've had Kamara Usman call out Canelo Alvarez, and now it's O'Malley getting in on this act. The UFC's youngest champion at 28 years old, who told reporters at the post-fight press conference that, quote, I wouldn't mind knocking out Javante Davis. And I know people are going to go, oh, you're a wannabe Connor. I'm telling you that fight is going to happen. O'Malley is as close uh, to a homegrown champion uh, as they come for the UFC as he came through on Dana White's Contender Series and since his sole knockout blemish to Marlon Vera in 2020 he's rebounded with a run of wins culminating with a somewhat fortuitous decision over Petr Jan before leaving the judges out of the equation to deliver that incredible bludgeoning over uh, Aljo on Saturday in Boston. If you haven't seen that go check it out, UFC have got it on their uh, YouTube channel um, they uploaded that pretty quickly after the pay-per-view and uh, yes, he's, his performance was a sight to behold. So right now, this for me seems as likely as Usman and Canelo, you know, than it does in Ganyu and Fury as Javante Davis has just got far more viable options in boxing, like a rematch of Isaac Cruz potentially. Um, a source from the most recent edition of the Source Report on Fight Hype uh, said Javante Davis wants to fight in a stadium soon. Uh, a source close to Tank reacting to O'Malley's call out of him told me on the phone earlier today that, and, I, and this is a quote, this doesn't surprise me when you're one of the bigger attractions in the sport. Everybody is gunning for you. People in boxing, people outside of boxing, in other sports, uh, they're all gunning for you and Tank is that guy. That's the end of the quote. Tank's focus, for me it seems, is on the top tier fighters in boxing rather than boxing and MMA. O'Malley, meanwhile, signed an eight fight contract extension with the UFC earlier this year and, and this fight was the first on that deal. The UFC would be loath to see their new star head into boxing and return with an almighty loss. So I can't really see this gaining any kind of traction for a number of years at the very least. Okay, that's it from me for today's Source Report. Uh, I'll be back a few times this week on location in Wednesday. I'm going to go out and, and uh, deliver a dispatch from there. I'm going to hopefully have some on-camera interviews with you guys this week. Just remember to like, comment and subscribe. Fight Hype. Cheers.